Meghan Markle's and Prince Harry's baby will be born in April but the royal couple is yet to reveal either the gender or the potential names they have chosen for their first child. Could this be the final name if the baby turns out to be a girl? The royal baby will be the first child for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry and the fourth grandchild to Prince Charles after Prince William's and Kate Middleton's three children. The royal couple will have the first ever heir of mixed race in the history of the royal family. But not only they have chosen to find out the gender of their child at birth, the couple is also yet to reveal his or her potential names. Royal commentator Lonnie Love claimed bookies have stopped taking bets on the royal baby turning out to being a girl as the odds are so high. Speculating on the potential royal girl's name, Ms. Love claimed the royal couple will pay tribute to Princess Diana. To the first name prediction, Ms. Love added her own for the royal baby's middle names. Speaking on talk show The Real earlier this week, the royal commentator said, if she is a girl. People are saying that it would be named Diana after his mother. And I've got to add my own thing, Diana, Doria, Elizabeth. So that would be his mother, her mother and then the Queen. Meghan's announcement she will be giving birth in April was quickly followed by the news she has rejected the Lindo Wing, the private maternity ward where the Duchess of Cambridge had all three of her children. The decision has fueled rumors of a split between the two young royal wives. Duncan Larcombe, one of only six journalists invited into Westminster Abbey for Prince William and Kate Middleton's 2011 wedding, believes there is definitely a personality clash. Mr. Larcombe said, they're incredibly different people. Meghan's big problem since the wedding has been making that adjustment from being a celebrity on the red carpet to being a royal on the red carpet. I think she has done all right in public. But what I'm told is behind the scenes is she is a bit of a whirlwind, she is quite demanding. Kate is the only person on the planet who can really understand some of the pressures Meghan is under. But it appears from the outside, that they are not the best of friends, and Meghan isn't turning to Kate for advice or support. An example of that is Meghan appears to have ruled out the Lindo wing for the baby. It perhaps is a sign that she doesn't want to be told what to do and isn't very keen on listening. The resignation of Meghan's chief bodyguard, the fourth high-profile walkout from Meghan's Kensington Place entourage this week simply added to the impression that Meghan can be difficult to deal with. But there are more straightforward reasons for some of Meghan's royal staff leaving, says Mr. Larcombe, who released a new edition of his book Prince Harry, The Inside Story, in 2017. He said, it doesn't look good. She has had three members of her inner circle of support move on and now the close protection officer is leaving. But it's what it looks like rather than what it is. My understanding is two of the members of staff were only on temporary contracts anyway. So after the wedding, it was quite natural they would move on, or have the option of moving on. I can't say the same, because I simply don't know. About the third member of staff. That does seem a little bit odd. But we'll probably never know why she chose to move on.